In a world where everyone uses magic in their daily lives, we see a ridiculously strong boy in the forest. His name is Mash, and his existence defies the natural order in the world. He lives in a hut with his father Burn Dead, where they enjoy their lives in isolation. When Mash goes home, he ends up breaking the door, forgetting if it was a push or pull. This makes Burn Dead upset, but Mash apologizes, promising to fix it. He tries to put it back, but he just pounds it against the door frame, making the damage even worse. After that, they have tea together, and we learn that Mash is different from other people, because he can't use magic, so Burned It has been trying to make his body stronger to make up for it, but Mash doesn't know this, so he continues to wonder why his training is purely physical. Burned It heads out, but warns Mash not to venture into the city while he's gone, but after his father leaves, he immediately runs to the city wearing a cloak, wanting to try a limited edition cream puff from the bakery. He walks around the city, where he sees the people using magic, but he thinks that it's nothing special, because the things they do with magic can also be done with their hands. Mash reaches the bakery and becomes excited, ordering some cream puffs. But as he pays, all the coins are bent, because he had clenched his fist when he had gotten too excited. But the baker thinks that the coins shouldn't be bent so easily. Mash fixes them up, straightening them to their original form, and the baker freaks out. After a while, Mash gets his food, but the winds blow, revealing his face to the public, and everyone is surprised because he doesn't have any marks on his face. Meanwhile, we see an officer named Brad at the police station. He reads a newspaper about this year's Divine Visionary, a title given to the top student of the Magic Academy, which also comes with a number of promotions and rewards. The phone rings, and he is informed about a man walking around the city with no mark on his face. As Mash walks around the streets, he wonders why everyone is staring at him, but he just eats his cream puffs. He bumps into a drunk officer named Terry, messing up his uniform with some of the cream and making him upset. Terry knocks the food off his hands as he continues to run his mouth. Mash rips off the officer's uniform, but he actually has good intentions, telling Terry that he will wash it up for him. At that moment, Brad arrives, asking Terry why he's naked. He looks at Mash, thinking that he is the man mentioned in the report, so he approaches him, but Burned It arrives, grabbing his son and running away, while Brad summons a magical bird to go after them. When they return home, Burned It scolds his son for going into the city despite his warning. Burned It forgives him in the end, but he punishes Mash by making him repeat his workout routine. As Mash leaves the house to train, Burned It thinks that Mash is actually a good kid, and he can't blame him for wanting to go to the city, because he has spent his entire life hiding in the forest. Burned It thinks about how to deal with the police when he sees Brad's bird watching him from his window. Brad suddenly arrives with his men, asking Burned Dead where his son is. We see Mash training in the woods, lifting the weight like it's nothing, and completing his workout in five minutes. He heads back home, but just as he is about to open the door, he hears Brad as he explains that magic has flourished, because they have gotten rid of all the people who can't use magic, calling it a necessary sacrifice for a better world. Brad pushes Burned Dead, telling him that sheltering the unmarked is a serious offense, but Burned Dead refuses to tell them about his son's whereabouts. In a flashback, we learn that Burned Dead has always been treated as a failure in everything that he does. This goes on until adulthood, and he thinks about taking his own life, when suddenly, he hears a baby mash crying. He realizes that the baby was abandoned because he had no mark, thinking that they are both unwanted by society so he decides to raise the baby as his own. Back in the present, Burned Dead screams at Mash to run, so Brad starts beating him up, but just as he is about to finish him off, Mash bursts through the door, hitting one of the officers, and blowing him away. Terry goes to him, but Mash rips his uniform off, slapping him repeatedly until he falls to the ground. Mash reveals that he didn't run because Burned Dead is his only family, but Brad laughs at him, thinking that he has no chance because he can't use magic. He attacks Mash with the spell he used to drive away a dragon, but Mash easily deflects it with one hand, and Brad can't believe his eyes. He follows up with an even stronger spell, but Mash slaps it away, causing it to explode elsewhere. Terry continues to attack Mash with his magic, while Mash deflects his attacks, and it looks like he's having fun. He takes his father's wand, while Brad defends himself with a barrier, thinking Mash is about to use magic, but Mash throws the wand at Brad, 
breaking his barrier and causing him to fall to his knees. Mash threatens to kill him the next time he threatens his family, but Brad proposes a deal where Mash will enroll in a magic academy and become a divine visionary so that society will accept him, saying that he will back Mash up because he wants the reward that comes with it. He claims that if they don't accept his deal, they'll be hunted down for the rest of their lives, so Mash agrees to the deal. Mash goes to the prestigious Easton Magic Academy with a fake mark on his face, where he will take the entrance exam that is notoriously difficult, with a passing rate of less than 3%. A man named Lucci looks at the applicants gathered on the field, recognizing some of their faces, when he suddenly hears a loud noise, and he sees Mash lifting weights like it's paper, making him confused because that is not the place for him to work out. Lucci calms himself down, looking at the field again, where he sees Mash reading a fitness book while doing the invisible chair, and he even notices Brad and Burn Dead behind him, who are trying to keep an eye on Mash. Lucci appears with style, announcing that he will oversee the exam. The students are stunned, because they recognize him as an extremely gifted mage. Lucci is flattered, but Mash comments on his unnecessarily flashy entrance, making Lucci want to fail him. Lucci announces that the first exam is about to begin, ordering everyone to take a seat, as he uses a spell to prepare the venue for everyone, making everyone amazed. But Mash is not impressed, telling him that he could have just taken them to a room where everything was already prepared, and this makes Lucci hate him even more. The exam begins, as the applicants check their papers, but the questions move around the page, making it difficult to read. We learn that Lucci enchanted the papers with magic, so they need to dispel the magic to pass the test. Brad and Burndad think Mash is doomed, but Mash orders the words to stop moving around, as he crushes his pen, causing the words to arrange themselves out of fear. He finishes the test early, and Lucci is surprised to see that everything is so perfectly aligned. Mash continues to use his superhuman abilities to pass the other parts of the exam, making everyone surprised, while Lucci thinks of a way to eliminate him. Lucci causes a maze to appear from the ground, giving the examinees 30 minutes to reach the goal. A girl named Lemon approaches Mash, wanting to tag along with him, so they start walking together, but she keeps on falling for the traps, and Mash realizes that she is useless. While his back is turned, she uses a spell to restrain him with cuffs, telling him that there is a reason why she needs to keep him away from the goal. But Mash easily breaks free and dashes off, because he also has his reasons to pass the test. After he leaves, a creature approaches Lemon, asking her a riddle, but she fails to answer it, so it attacks her, but Mash punches the creature, knocking it out with a single punch. Lemon wonders why he saved her, and Mash explains that they must be there for a similar reason, so he feels sorry for her. She is worried that they won't be able to complete the maze in time, but Mash has a plan. Meanwhile, Lucci is confident that Mash is going to fail, but the ground suddenly starts shaking as they hear loud noises. The wall breaks as Mash joins them, and we learn that he just destroyed the maze to create a path. The other successful examinees call him a cheater, telling him to go home, but Lemon tells them that it wasn't Mash's fault, confessing that Lucci promised to get her into the school if she stopped Mash. Lucci admits to this, saying that he doesn't like Mash, as he unleashes his magical powers. He tells them that he will fail Mash and Lemon, asking them if they want to challenge his decision. But Mash crushes Lucci's wand with his fist, as he tells the professor that he has gone too far. At that moment, the headmaster Wahlberg arrives, informing them that the final interview is about to begin, and that he will now be acting as the examiner. Mash is the first applicant to be interviewed, so he is taken to a room where he is surrounded by school officials. He is asked a few questions, and the officials don't seem to like his answers. However, the headmaster finds him interesting, asking him why he saved the girl in the maze even though he didn't have enough time left. Mash tells him that he had a feeling that he would regret not saving her, and Wahlberg realizes that Mash is the type to act before thinking, explaining that there are creatures stronger than him, and he wonders if Mash would act that way if faced with such a creature. Wahlberg uses his magic to summon a large creature that threatens to harm a doll, which contains the soul of the person that is dearest to Mash, who is obviously burned dead. Mash tries to stop it by punching it, but it does nothing, and his hand starts bleeding. The school officials are surprised when he uses his hands to stop the blade from reaching the doll. He knows that the creature will eventually disappear, intending to outlast it. 
Wahlberg realizes that Mash is someone who can protect the weak and regulate the strong, so he recalls the creature and lights up the place, revealing that Mash was just being tested as he welcomes him to the Easton Magic Academy. Later on, we see them in class, where they learn the lock opening spell, which is considered to be basic. The teacher demonstrates it, but Mash just uses his hands to destroy the lock, making the teacher angry because he didn't even use magic. Mash explains that he is not good with magic, while the boy next to him, Finn, starts seeing him as a troublemaker. After class, Finn looks for his dorm, hoping Mash is not going to be his roommate. He finds his room, but the door is missing, and he sees Mash holding onto it, making him realize that they are going to be sharing the room. They get to know each other, and Finn starts to think that Mash is just a normal guy, but he suddenly introduces Finn to his muscles, making him think he is a weirdo. Mash asks Finn if he can borrow his broom for the next class, since he brought a giant plant root instead, thinking it was a broom. Finn allows it, and the next day, the teacher trains them to fly with the broom. Mash tries to do it, but the broom won't respond to him, so he gets ridiculed by a student, saying that he's slowing the class down. But Mash stomps his foot, and causes the broom to fly into his hand. The student calls him a cheater, saying he didn't use magic, as the teacher announces a time trial to see how fast the students can fly with their brooms. The guy challenges Mash to a race, where the loser must obey the winner until they graduate. Mash accepts the challenge, so they prepare to race. The instructor doubts Mash can even ride his broom, but she begins the race anyway, and Mash ends up winning instantly, setting a new world record with his speed. Everyone is confused, because they didn't even see Mash move, but Finn saw Mash throw the broom forward, and jump towards it, allowing him to ride it while it was in mid-air. The student accuses Mash of cheating, and he takes pity on him, so he drops the bet. The guy continues to run his mouth, but it gets stitched shut as a student named Cavill makes his entrance. He apologizes on his friend's behalf, but everyone knows that Cavill is a troublemaker, so they are worried about Mash, thinking he has just become a target. Cavill introduces himself to Mash, but Mash mishears his name as Cabbage, making everyone fall silent. Cavill prepares to cast a spell, but the teacher interrupts, reminding them that they are in the middle of class. So Cavill tells him to meet him after class, and he leaves the scene. As they make their way back to their room, Finn reveals that Cavill is the son of a high-ranking member at the Bureau of Magic. He adds that Mash will get expelled if he messes with Cavill, since his family has close ties with the Vice Principal, and Finn has actually seen students suffer because of Cavill, so he understands why everyone is scared of him. Mash starts baking cream puffs on his own, enjoying the experience, while Cavill is waiting for him at the field, and becomes upset that Mash isn't showing up. The next day, Mash takes out his book for his next class, but it's in terrible condition. Cavill approaches him, asking him why he didn't show up. And Mash apologizes, saying he was too busy making cream puffs, which seems to annoy Cavill. Cavill asks him if he wants to become the Divine Visionary, claiming that he can help Mash achieve his goal, by using his connection with the Vice Principal, if Mash will follow his orders. Mash immediately agrees to this, and he turns into Cavill's lapdog, following his every order as part of the deal. Mash prepares for his next class, but he realizes that his book about the subject is also in bad shape. Finn reluctantly agrees to share his book, and Mash thinks he is lucky to have a friend like Finn. Mash gives Cavill some water, but he pours it on the floor, ordering Mash to clean it up. As Mash cleans the floor, it's revealed that Cavill was ordering Finn to tamper with Mash's books, but he is getting bored, so he wants Finn to burn Mash's clothes. Finn refuses to obey, so Cavill uses his magic to bring Finn to his knees and beat him up. After some time, Mash arrives at the scene, asking Cavill what he's doing. Cavill claims he just wants to get an apology from Finn, who starts crying as he confesses that he ruined Mash's books under Cavill's orders, apologizing for his actions. Cavill asks Mash if he wants to have dinner with the vice principal, but Mash goes to him and bashes his head against the floor, instantly knocking him out. Finn tells Mash that he is going to get expelled, making him realize that he is in trouble. The Vice Principal Farman suddenly arrives, revealing that Cavill's father entrusted him to look after his son. Farman witnessed the entire incident, but he calls it a violent attack against Cavill, so he is going to hold a school conference to discuss what they just did. He mentions that their status is different from Cavill, so he deserves special treatment, even calling them idiots. As he continues to run his mouth, 
Mash rushes over to him, landing a knee strike on his face, while the others watch in horror. Mash explains that since Farman isn't open to reason, it would make sense to beat him up, since he is already in trouble anyway. Farman threatens to expel him, as he tries to cast a spell, but Mash slaps dirt on his face. He digs a hole in the ground, slamming Farman into the hole, and he proceeds to cover it up. Farman warns Mash that he won't get away with this, but Mash threatens to bury him alive. After that, he is summoned by the headmaster, who tells him that he just received a notice from the Bureau of Magic to have him expelled. We learn that the Bureau of Magic is the highest legal authority in the land, and the divine visionaries produced by the Academy are at its core. He reminds Mash about Cavill's status, but he burns the notice, because he doesn't want good people to be put at a disadvantage. Wahlberg rants about the current status of the world, since it only serves the elites. He thinks that it needs more people like Mash, who are willing to sacrifice themselves to do the right thing, and he even wants Mash to become a divine visionary someday. Mash mentions how he plans to become one, so the headmaster explains the way to become one, but Mash can't handle all the information. So Wahlberg decides to keep it simple, telling him that he just needs to earn high marks and acquire as many coins as possible. He assures Mash that he will take care of the bureau and the vice principal, and Mash takes his leave. The next day, the captain of the Duello team, Tom, invites him to represent their dorm in a game, which is basically like Quidditch from Harry Potter. Mash says that he can't ride a broom, but Tom doesn't believe him, dragging him into the team. During the match, the enemy grabs possession of the ball, and Mash is still on the ground, as he reiterates that he can't ride a broom. The crowd thinks that he isn't even trying, so they jeer at him, throwing things at him. His team is getting wrecked, and Tom goes to him, explaining the rules of the game. We learn that they need to pass the ball through the enemy's ring to earn points, and the use of magic is forbidden, since the game is all about broom technique. Tom is about to get back to the game, when the enemy captain intentionally bumps into him, causing him to fall. Mash checks up on him, and Tom seems to have broken some bones, asking the enemy captain about his sense of sportsmanship. But the enemy captain doesn't care, revealing that winning is all that matters to him, before getting back into the game. Tom knows that their team is about to lose, but he tells Mash that winning isn't everything, and that giving one's best is even more important. They are 50 points behind, making the enemy captain think that they are about to win, but they seem to have enraged Mash, who grabs onto his broom and jumps into the air. He maintains his altitude by rapidly kicking around, leaving the spectators confused. He gains possession of the ball, while the enemy team charges toward him, but he uses his inhuman strength to throw the ball, blowing them away, and scoring a point. The crowd is surprised as the ball circles around, returning to Mash like a boomerang. He keeps repeating the same move to score more points, while everyone watches on in disbelief. Their score eventually reaches 999, making them the winners, and the academy recognizes their score as a record, and they are given silver coins as a reward. Finn thinks his performance was incredible, but Mash doesn't want to play that game again, while Tom gives him a hug, as he thanks him for helping the team win. Later, we see a student named Lance reading a newspaper, where he learns about Mash's achievement. He recognizes Mash from the entrance exam, destroying his picture as he makes Mash's next target. During his class, Tom pesters him into practicing for their game, while Lemon wants to study with him, but Mash isn't interested in spending time with them. At that moment, Lance appears, and Lemon recognizes him as the student who topped the entrance exam. Lance wants to do something fun, pulling out a special magical tool and opening it, causing Mash's friends to disappear, as they are trapped inside of the bottle. Lance tells Mash to go to the forest if he wants them back, and then disappears. They meet at the forest, where Lance reveals he is also collecting coins, showing two silver coins. We learn that most people only have one magic line on their face, but there are rare cases when a person has more magic lines, indicating that they have greater magical power. Lance challenges Mash to a duel, where they each bet one silver coin, and Mash accepts the duel, so Lance pulls out his wand, using a spell to prepare the area for their duel. After he has cleared the area, Mash tries to attack him with his fists, but Lance uses a gravity spell to slam him to the ground. Mash struggles as he tries to stand, while Lance tells him that no human can withstand his spell, but Mash punches through the ground, pulling out giant roots and splitting the earth beneath his opponent, driving him back. 
Lance lands on his knees, stunned by Mash's ridiculous power, as Mash dashes towards him. Lance tries to stop Mash with the same gravity spell, but Mash uses his speed to escape and tries to punch him, but Lance narrowly dodges his attacks. His necklace falls to the ground, and Mash picks it up out of curiosity. He opens it up, revealing the picture of Lance's sister, and Lance confesses that he has a sister complex, telling Mash to give it back. Lance asks him what is the most important thing in the world. Mash tries to answer Cream Puffs, but Lance tells him he is wrong, and the only correct answer is his little sister, making Mash think that he's a creep. Lance threatens to drop his friends down the cliff, claiming that he will use them to help him win the match. In a flashback, we learn that Lance's sister is suffering from an incurable disease that will strip her of her magical powers. And without them, she will have to be taken out, because magicless people have no right to live in their world, so Lance wants to become a divine visionary to save his sister from the system. Back in the present, Lance drops the bottle, using a magic spell to accelerate its descent, but Mash changes into his workout gear. He gets into starting position, and dashes forward, moving so fast that he disappears before his enemy's eyes. Lance tries to look for him, and Mash suddenly appears behind him. He can't believe that Mash managed to recover the bottle so quickly, thinking he must be using magic, but Mash is no longer interested in fighting, because he knows that Lance is not a bad guy, pointing out that the bottle he dropped was empty. He rushes towards Lance, managing to grab the real bottle, and he frees his friends. Lance concedes the duel, handing over his silver coin before leaving. As he walks away, Mash realizes that Lance is actually a pretty good guy, and his friends surround him, thanking him for saving them. We learn that there are three dorms at the academy that divide the students based on their characteristics. There's Mash's dorm Adler, which represents courage, the Orca dorm for wisdom, and the Lang dorm for ambition, with the three dorms having a rivalry between them at the academy. Mash puts together his silver coins, and we learn that five silver coins are equivalent to one gold coin. He relaxes with Finn, who suddenly starts to panic, because they haven't done their potions assignment. Lance shows up, calling them slackers for forgetting the assignment, worrying they are going to ruin their dorm's reputation. But Mash uses his necklace against him, and just seeing his little sister blows him away, and knocks him out cold. He ends up deciding to help them, revealing a screaming mandrake used for the assignment, a plant that becomes a useful ingredient after it is silenced. He shows them the spell to put it asleep, and tells them to give it a shot. Finn tries out the spell, but he fails to put it to sleep. Mash comments that it's because his core muscles are too weak, but when Mash tries out the spell, his mandrake starts freaking out instead. Lance gives Finn some pointers, telling him to focus his magic on a single point, and Finn manages to put his mandrake to sleep. But meanwhile, Mash's mandrake has become huge, going on a rampage, but Mash just gives it a slap and knocks it out. Lance moves on to preparing the mandrake, saying it's pretty easy, showing them how it's done, cooking it up, and creating a potion. Finn thinks it's not easy at all, but Mash is confident, saying it's no problem, since it doesn't require any magic. So he repeats the steps that Lance showed him, but he ends up making a cream puff instead. Lance thinks he is messing around, so he watches Mash and guides him step by step, but it still turns out as a cream puff, which leaves Lance completely confused. And despite all his attempts, it always comes out as a cream puff, but they are actually pretty good. We see Headmaster Wahlberg, as he thinks about the upcoming cross-dorm, off-campus class, wondering if Mash will be okay. We see a student named Barrett, as he bumps into some other students. They tell him off, but he ends up beating them all up, and he calls them side characters. Meanwhile at the Lang dorm, they think that those who rule should have overwhelming power, thinking that the Adler dorm is unworthy, so the leader orders for them to take all of the coins from the Adler students. The next day, the Lang and Adler dorms have a joint class in the forest. Mash wonders what they will be doing for the class, and they notice Barrett, who makes a racket about how he is the main character. Mash thinks he is weird, but Barrett thinks he is a side character, looking at his appearance. But Lemon arrives, asking Mash if she can tag along with him. Barrett gets annoyed and spits on Mash. He starts freaking out about how he is getting attention from a girl, thinking that it's because of people like him that he can't get a girl himself, wanting to join the bureau so he can get rid of all the hot guys in the world. But the group just ignores him, and he gets even more annoyed. 
However, the professor appears, explaining their next class. They are tasked with taking out forest scorpions and retrieving the stone from their heads. Regular stones are worth a bronze coin, but the stronger scorpions have a square stone, which is worth a silver coin. The professor sends them off, and Mash is aiming for a silver coin. He is suddenly approached by a student named Silva, who witnessed his feat during his duello match, but reminds him he is nothing as he attacks Mash with a pillar of iron. The professor breaks things up, and Silva claims they were just messing around. Mash glares at him, but Lance ends up stopping him, revealing that Silva is actually a year older than them, but since he was a troublemaker, he was held back for a year. Lance warns him to avoid Silva, but Mash is just glad his cream puff didn't get squished. They head into the forest, and Lance thinks they should work together, but Mash disappears, because he happened to zone out. He runs into Barrett, who starts freaking out, but he just slaps him. Barrett wants to fight him, but they suddenly hear a scream, as we see a girl being attacked by another student. She cries for help, and there is an explosion that defeats the boy. The girl thanks Barrett for saving her, and he starts to freak out. He tries to act cool, but when she grabs his hand, he starts to lose it. Meanwhile, we see a defeated scorpion, as it seems Silva has already obtained a square stone, but it seems there is something else he is after. The girl thanks Barrett once again, and their knees touch. Barrett is overwhelmed, and starts slamming his head into the ground, but we learn that the girl is using magic to charm him, magic that makes anyone who finds her attractive, to fall madly in love with her. She tries to work her magic on Mash, but he says he didn't really do anything. The girl is shocked her magic isn't working on him, so she tries to use more energy, grabbing his hand, but it still has no effect on him, leaving her devastated. Barrett wonders about her situation, and the girl explains she is being threatened by Silva, who is forcing her to use her unique magic. Barrett swears to help her, and at that moment, they are suddenly attacked, and Silva appears. Barrett decides to fight him to help the girl. He attacks with a barrage of fireballs, ending things with a giant explosion. Meanwhile, we see Finn and Lemon clinging onto Lance as they cry for help, but he wonders if Mash is okay, since he is being targeted by Silva. Barrett thinks he has won, but as the smoke clears, we see that Silva protected himself with his iron. He attacks Barrett with his pillar, and knocks Mash's cream puff out of his hand. Silva continues to taunt them to fight him, while Mash is just stunned by the loss of his cream puff. Barrett starts to get worried, thinking there is a big difference in their magic power. He thinks Mash is no use, so he thinks it's all up to him to save the girl. Silva starts taunting him, saying his magic was weak and calling him a letdown. So he decides to give them a chance, saying if he can take five of his attacks, he will leave the girl alone, even wagering a silver coin in accordance with the rules of the academy. The girl thinks it's a ridiculous deal, saying he could get seriously injured, but Barrett accepts it, thinking he can withstand five hits. However, Silva says that Mash is also a part of it, so he also needs to agree. Barrett says Mash isn't involved, but Silva insists that he is, so Barrett decides to take on all ten attacks to cover for Mash. Silva thinks he is mad, and he starts attacking with his Iron Fist spell. Barrett is brought to his knees after just one attack, but he manages to get back up. Silva keeps on attacking with his spell, and Barrett is continuously slammed by the iron pillars, while the girl and Mash watch on. After nine attacks, Barrett is still standing, thinking about how the girl cried for his help. Silva prepares an extra strong attack for the final blow. The attack lands, and Barrett is knocked out. Silva starts to gloat, but Barrett somehow manages to get back up. He approaches Silva, saying that it's over, but he suddenly collapses, and Silva calls him an idiot. Barrett tells Mash to take the girl and run, but it's revealed that the girl is actually working with Silva, as she calls him cheesy, and says that she hates guys like him. Silva laughs at him for being so easily tricked, but his mouth is suddenly stuffed with a cream puff. Mash thinks they have gone too far, and decides to join the fight, saying that he will join the 10-hit challenge, telling Silva to bring it on. Meanwhile, we see his friends manage to take out a scorpion, but Lance wonders if Mash will be okay. Lemon thinks he will be fine, since he even beat the professor during their entrance exam, but Lance explains there are different types of magic users. There are white mages that are more academic and support-focused, 
and there are red mages that focus on combat, and Mash has really only gone up against white mages so far. He thinks that if Mash were to go up against any red mage past their first year, there would be many that would surpass him. Silva thinks Mash is just acting tough, and he goes on to say how he hates weaklings that act tough, seeing them as hypocrites, and he finds it amusing to crush their spirits. He notices his robe is slightly singed from Barrett's magic, so he prepares to attack him again, but Mash rushes at him, although he manages to counter. Mash is pushed back, and Silva starts to laugh, thinking he is far superior, mentioning how he earned two gold coins during his first year at the academy. He attacks Mash with his magic, and Mash gets pummeled, but he eventually catches Silva's spell, crushing it with his hand. Mash prepares to use tricep magic, and Silva thinks he is messing around. He keeps on attacking with his iron pillars, but Mash dodges, and starts smashing right through them. He lands a punch on Silva, blowing him away, and he starts bleeding all over the place, wondering what is going on. He thinks his magic is top tier, even among the second year students, as he launches a counterattack, but Mash smashes right through it, landing another blow on him. Silva is brought to his knees, and he starts to realize he can't win. He knows he can't take any more hits, but Mash suddenly backs away, and takes a seat. Silva wonders what he is doing, and Mash tells him there are eight more attacks to go. Mash gets back up, asking if he is ready for the next attack, but Silva knows he can't take any more, thinking he would die. He tries to think of a plan, and at that moment, an enormous scorpion suddenly appears. It has a star-shaped stone on its head, which means it's extra strong and valuable. Silva thinks he can get away while Mash is occupied by it, but Mash sends it flying with a single hit, saying he has no time to deal with it, and it drops its star-shaped stone. Silva starts freaking out, thinking Mash is a monster, but Mash calls off their fight, feeling bad for him, and he turns his attention to the girl. The girl starts panicking, and she turns on the waterworks, crying and saying that she was forced into helping Silva. But Mash tells her it's okay, and she thinks that men are just too easy to manipulate. But Mash believes in equality, as he slams her into the ground, and Barrett thinks there is something wrong with him. Mash meets up with his friends, and Lemon worries, seeing him all beaten up, but he says he is fine. Finn is impressed he even beat the Starstone Scorpion, revealing that it's worth two silver coins. Lemon thinks he should go to the nurse's office, and she checks up on Barrett as well. He is instantly charmed by her, and he starts freaking out, while she thinks he is just weird. Barrett ends up apologizing to Mash for getting him mixed up into things, and thanks him for his help. But Mash thinks he is acting weird, so Barrett immediately threatens to beat him, saying it took everything for him to be nice. Mash's pocket suddenly glows, as his silver coins have joined to become a gold coin. Lance mentions how they are being targeted, hearing that the Langdorm is hunting them for their coins, explaining why Silva was after them. He explains that the Langdorm is basically Slytherin, with people that value birthright and bloodlines, wanting to prevent the riffraff from joining the Bureau of Magic. He warns them to watch out for the Magia Lupus, the group of elite students from the Lang Dorm. Mash mentions how he didn't even know they were separated by dorms, and Finn reminds him about the sorting ceremony. We see that right after they were accepted into the academy, they were sorted by the skeleton of a unicorn. The students grab onto its horn, and the skeleton is able to read their mind and sort them into the appropriate dorm. But when it was Mash's turn, it sees he only thinks about cream puffs. The skeleton panics, as this is the first time in centuries it has struggled to sort a student. It tries to look deeper into his mind, but there is really only cream puffs. And it just decides that people who love cream puffs must belong to the Adler dorm. Lance continues to explain that the Magia Lupus consists of the seven top students of the dorm, and Silva must have been one of the lackeys. He warns Mash that since he has a coin, he needs to be extra careful, telling him to stick with people from their dorm, but despite this warning, Mash ends up getting lost while looking for his class. He finds a door to a room, and he thinks about how to open it, wondering if it is a push or a pull. Meanwhile, we see Silva as he apologizes for his failure. We learn that the leader of the Lang dorm is named Abel, and he holds a creepy-looking doll. He says that their mission is to cleanse the world of its impurities, and Silva begs for a second chance, but Abel calls him unworthy to even be a pawn, and he is turned into a doll. The doll gets up, and proceeds to get in line. 
and Abel claims he is the only one worthy to become the next divine visionary, as he talks to his doll which he calls mother. But at that moment, Mash suddenly enters, apologizing for destroying another door, and he points out that Abel is weird for talking to a doll. Abel is aware that Mash has a gold coin, and he asks him why he is trying to become a divine visionary. Mash says he just wants to live peacefully with his family, but the current world won't accept him. Abel thinks he is ridiculous and unworthy, explaining how he wants to return the world to its rightful form. He says humanity was able to flourish, thanks to getting rid of the weak and people without magic, but he thinks society has started to become weak. He calls humans beasts by nature, so he plans to restore the natural order, but Mash thinks he just wants to live peacefully as well, not understanding what he was saying. Abel offers to let him go in exchange for his gold coin, but Mash just refuses. Abel attacks with one of his puppets, but Mash dodges, countering with his legs and ripping the strings attached to the puppet, and it turns back into Silva. Mash is suddenly grabbed by another puppet. The puppet grabs his coin and flicks it over to Abel. Mash is then thrown into a pillar, but he gets back up, apologizing for calling his puppet weak, but he suddenly steps on Abel's head, so he decides to take him to the infirmary. Abel wonders if he is giving up on his coin, but Mash says he is just prioritizing, but he declares he won't lose, no matter how strong they are. Mash leaves with Silva, but Abel feels something is off. He notices a missing button on his puppet, and he finds it in his hand instead of Mash's coin. One of the students can't believe what just happened. As the puppet was flicking the coin, Mash ripped its button off, spitting it out at an incredible speed, hitting the coin in midair, and sucking his coin back to himself. The girl can't believe it, and Abel finds Mash interesting. At the infirmary, Silva suddenly wakes up, wondering what happened, because he has no memory of anything after he was turned into a doll. But he sees Mash working out in front of him, and he realizes Mash must have saved him. He asks why Mash would save him when they were just enemies, but Mash says that when one is in trouble, they are all in trouble. Seeing he is okay, Mash decides to leave, and Silva reflects on his actions. Meanwhile in Mash's dorm room, we see Lance and Barrett in a heated discussion. Lance comments on his new hairstyle, and Barrett says it's none of his business, but he thinks Lemon prefers guys with bangs. Finn wonders what they are doing in his room, but Barrett gets pissed off looking at Lance, thinking he's had an easy life thanks to his good looks. Lance wants to teach him a lesson, and the two prepare to fight, but Mash suddenly enters, telling them not to break things in his room. Mash enjoys a cream puff, thinking it's just another peaceful day. Lemon suddenly appears, saying there is big news, leading them over to a magic scale. The scale shows how many gold coins each dorm has, and we see the Lang dorm already has 15, while the Alder and Orca dorms only have one each. The Lang dorm has been taking coins from the other dorms, and all of the Alder upperclassmen who could stop them are away on internships. So at this rate, Lang will have the next Divine Visionary. The Orca dorm is too busy focused on their research, so it's up to them to stop the Lang dorm. The guys get fired up, thinking they just need to crush the Lang students, but Mash ends up in the Owl Hut, and we learn that the Headmaster was forced to give him a punishment, so he has to clean the Owl Hut for a week. The Owls peck at him, and he thinks about how they were just getting fired up. Lance decides to join him, saying that the Lang students might target him since he has a coin, so he can use that as a chance to hunt them, but Mash thinks he is just worried about him. Meanwhile, we see two Lang students approaching, preparing themselves to take Mash's coin. The owls keep pecking at Mash, and water suddenly appears underneath him, and he falls in, while Lance dodges a giant spinning blade. Mash struggles in the water, and the two Lang students introduce themselves as Andrew and Shinri, the sixth and seventh fangs of the Magia Lupus, challenging them to a fight, while wagering a gold coin. Mash says he's never swum, as he sinks into the water. Andrew transforms into a shark, and jumps into some water to go after Mash leading Shinri to face off against Lance. Shinri attacks with his blade, but Lance dodges, thinking his magic to control a spinning blade is pretty weak compared to his gravity magic. But as he goes to cast his spell, he is distracted by the owls. He dodges another attack, and tries to focus on casting his spell, but he thinks of his sister, telling him not to harm the owls. Shinri attacks using double blades, and Lance notices the owls behind him, so he ends up getting hit by the attack. 
Shinri sees that Lance's wand is made out of Magnolia, so he realizes Lance is from the Crown family who specializes in gravity magic. He heard that the son of the Crown family ran away from home, so he thinks it was because he was too weak, and he thinks he can feel superior for beating someone from the Crown family. Lance manages to use his spell, but it only makes a shovel fall to the ground. Shinri is disappointed with him, and decides to finish him off, attacking with triple blades. But he thinks something is off, as he notices all the owls in one spot. Lance uses his gravity spell, crushing all the blades, as he says the owls were in the way, so he moves them by dropping a shovel to cut open a bag of feed, to draw all the owls into one spot. Shinri attacks using his strongest blade, but Lance easily crushes him with his gravity. Shinri can't believe that even though they both have double lines, there is such a big difference in their power, but Lance says that someone like him, who fights for themselves to feel superior, can't compare to him, who fights for the sake of saving his sister. Meanwhile, Andrew gloats about trapping Mash in his sea field, saying there is no way to escape. But Mash suddenly zooms past, and Andrew is shocked at the speed, not even able to see what it was. He thinks he must be imagining things, but Mash zooms right past him once again. He thinks about how Mash said he didn't know how to swim, but Mash says he got the hang of it, thanking him for helping him realize he could swim. Mash continues to swim all around him, and Andrew feels like he is the one getting hunted, so he uses another spell, to transform into a more monstrous form, but Mash crashes into him, continuously hitting him as he swims. Andrew can't handle the blows, and Mash ends up escaping the sea field. Lance takes their coin, and they think they weren't that strong for being members of the Magia Lupus. Mash thinks they aren't a big deal, but suddenly, another one of their members appear. In an instant, he gets past the both of them, and Lance tries to use his gravity spell, but for some reason, his spell doesn't work. Mash immediately gets into his gear, charging with all his speed, but the man manages to dodge him. Lance wonders if he uses some kind of teleportation magic, but the man uses a magic bottle to collect his allies. The man bids them farewell, but says they will meet again soon, and Lance thinks that beating the Magia Lupus might not be so easy after all. As the masked man walks away, his mask cracks, and he thinks about Mash's attack. He thinks about how he was able to move so fast, even without magic, and he wonders if they are the same. At night, we see the man as he confronts a student from the Orca dorm for his gold coin. The student attacks with magma magic, but he is completely unfazed, and ends up easily defeating him, disappointed it ended so quickly. Elsewhere, we see a puppet, in the robes of a student, wandering through the school. The next day, Lance plans how they should deal with the Magia Lupus. We learn the location of each dorm is hidden, so Lance suggests finding the Lang dorm and going on the offensive to take their coins, but Mash is too busy making cream puffs. Lance gives him a new robe, and Mash notices it has a logo on the back. Lance tells him it's the mark of Adler, hoping it will remind him that he belongs to their dorm. Lemon suddenly bursts in, telling them something happened to Tom. They visit him in the infirmary, and find he looks completely drained. Tom says he has no memory of how he ended up in the infirmary, but notes that he normally lives his life at full throttle, so he usually falls right asleep and doesn't dream, but last night, he dreamt he was trapped in a dark box, feeling conscious, but he couldn't do anything. Lemon wonders how he is feeling, and Tom says he is okay, but it seems he is temporarily unable to use magic, feeling as though his magic energy has been drained from him. It's revealed there are a number of other students who are suffering from the same condition, and it seems to have started ever since the headmaster was called away by the Bureau of Magic. Lemon gives Mash a cream puff lucky charm, and makes him promise not to do anything too risky. She tells him to always keep it with him, so he can think of her, but she starts to lose it imagining him dreaming about her. Later that night, Lance and Mash wander around the school, looking for the Lang dorm. They are joined by Barrett and Finn, but Lance wonders why they are tagging along. Barrett is interested in getting coins, and Finn just doesn't want to be left alone in his room. As they explore, they end up seeing Lemon, and Barrett rushes over to her, but Lance notices something is off. Lemon's body twists and convulses, and she has been turned into a puppet, but the others manage to avoid her gaze. She continues on her way, and Barrett finds her cute even as a puppet. They decide to go after her, but when they turn the corner, they come to a dead end. 
Finn hears the crackling of her body, and Lance uses Revelio, which reveals a hidden door. Lance notes they need another spell to open the door, and Barrett tries using his fireballs to blow it open, but the door doesn't even budge, and he wonders how they are going to get in. But Mash grabs a suit of armor, throwing it down next to the door, and he is able to crack it open. He sticks the sword inside, using it as a lever, and he steps on it, blowing the door right out of the school, and creating a huge hole in the roof. Lance notes that the Magia Lupus is probably waiting for them inside, and Mash looks at his good luck charm, thinking he won't be able to keep his promise to Lemon. The group heads in, and they are surprised there was a hidden space under the school. They see light at the end of the tunnel, and they come out to an arena. A student named Gitsuku appears, and tells them they need to defeat him in order to continue. Lance is about to fight, but Barrett decides to step in, since he has a grudge against good-looking guys. Barrett rants about how easy his life must be, but Gitsuku thinks he's just jealous, and he transforms his wand into a rose whip, and the two prepare to fight. Meanwhile at the Bureau of Magic, we see Headmaster Wahlberg talking to the director. Wahlberg knows he must have been called for a serious issue, and the director reveals that six of the most notorious criminals on death row have escaped their prison. The guards were all slaughtered, and it seems they had help from the one known as Innocent Zero. Back at the arena, Barrett attacks with his fireball, but it gets stopped by Gitsuku's vines. The vines lash out, and Barrett barely manages to dodge. However, Barrett is still confident he will win, as he attacks with another round of fireballs, but they just land around Gitsuku, creating marks around him. Barrett tells him to watch his step, saying they have five times the power as normal. Gitsuku thinks it's a lame trap, but Barrett is sure he will fall for it. Gitsuku wonders if Barrett has a way to move him into the trap, but he attacks with his rose whip. Barrett tries to defend himself, but his fireballs aren't very effective, and he gets hit by the vines. Barrett gets grabbed, and he even drops his wand. Gitsuku grows the thorns on his vines, stabbing Barrett with the spikes. Gitsuku tells him the fight is over, and goes to finish him off, but Barrett activates his trap card, causing a huge explosion from one of the marks. Gitsuku's wand is destroyed, and Barrett mentions he never said anything about stepping on the marks, revealing that his spell was actually a time bomb. He activates his remaining marks, and Gitsuku can't believe he lost to someone like him. The marks go off and cause a huge explosion. Finn congratulates him, and Barrett is excited to face another opponent, but Gitsuku poses even though he is defeated, and the group suddenly starts sinking into the ground. Mash tries to save his cream puff, and they all get sucked into the ground. They land on the floor below, and it seems they are all split up. Lance suddenly feels an overwhelming energy, and he is confronted by Mattel, the third fangs of the Magia Lupus. Barrett and Finn land together, and they come across Milo and Love, the fourth and fifth fangs. And Finn thinks they are doomed, but Barrett tells him not to give up, thinking he has the power of the main character. Meanwhile, Mash lands in a dark room, wondering where his friends are. The room lights up, and he is greeted by the masked man, who introduces himself as Razor, the second fangs of the Magia Lupus. He compliments Mash on his movements from their last meeting, but he seems to have figured out that Mash can't use any magic, and Mash gets worried that someone has figured out his secret. We see Mal as he explains how strength is everything in their world, and the weak are worthless. Lance isn't interested, and attacks using his gravity magic, but Mal gets squished into mud, and seeps into the ground. Mattel reappears behind him with a number of clones, calling his gravity magic interesting, and they charge at him. Lance defends himself with his spell, squashing them back into mud, but Mattel tells him it's useless, as the mud starts to reform, attacking with a spike, which Lance barely avoids. Lance thinks he needs to attack the real body to stop the clones, so he decides to attack the whole field with his magic. But Mattel reappears behind him once again, catching him with his mud, and Mattel attacks with a barrage of hardened mud balls. Mattel thinks Lance is pretty skilled, but says his talent is being wasted, so he invites him to serve the Magia Lupus. Mattel explains that mages develop depending on their environment and the people around them. He calls everyone in the Adler dorm trash, and tells Lance he will only sink to their level by hanging around them. He boasts about the talent they have in the Magia Lupus, as well as having the best education, tools, and potions. But Lance scoffs, saying that his strength isn't reliant on his environment, calling Madeline inferior. 
Lance attacks with his magic, but this time, he sends Mattel into the wall. He explodes with mud, and it seems he has surrounded the room with mud to absorb any impacts. So against gravity magic which relies on slamming opponents into the ground, Mattel thinks he can't lose. But Lance suddenly starts attacking with rocks instead, and he realizes Lance has worked out his trick. Mattel is forced out of hiding, and Lance claims that he must have a better environment since he is stronger. But Mattel tells him not to get cocky, as he takes out a potion of magical essence that was extracted from the other students. He drinks the potion, causing his power to surge, and he uses an advanced form of his magic known as Secondeth. He creates an enormous demon mud monster, and he goes on to explain that there are different tiers in magic. Secondeth magic can only be cast by double liners, and only by the few that are worthy. Mattel thinks back to when he was a child, and his father explains that his worth is solely based on his aptitude for magic, so he has been focused on getting his father's approval. He thinks he is worthy after achieving this level of magic, telling Lance he will never be as strong since he hangs out with other failures. But Lance dodges his attack, thinking about how meeting Mash helped him improve, as he reveals he can also use Secondeth magic, creating gravity pillars that surround Mattel's monster. The monster is pulled by gravity from all sides by each of the pillars, and Lance creates one more above it, causing the monster to be ripped apart. Mattel can't believe he lost, and he thinks back to how his father would never acknowledge him, no matter what he achieved, and he thinks that his father was right, and that he must be worthless. But Lance suddenly throws him his book that he found, and Lance comments on how worn it is, so he can see how hard he has worked to get where he is. Lance says that his own family valued worth by position and social standing, so he thinks they were raised in a similar way. But he thinks about his sister, who just wanted to be a singer, and wanted to try her best, which helped him to realize that that is more important. Although he can't agree with the way Mantle thinks, he respects his efforts, and he leaves to go find his friends. Meanwhile, we see Mash as he worries that Razor knows his secret. Razor thinks they are similar, since they are both rejected by the world, but he says he has his own reasons for being there, so the two prepare to fight. Mash gets changed into his workout gear, charging with a kick that pushes Razor back, but Razor suddenly dashes right past him, cutting him in the process. Razor tells him he can't win, as we see his magic that boosts his speed. He dashes all around, landing multiple hits, and he says they are on different levels. Mash refuses to give up, and Razor thinks his dream to live peacefully with his family is disgusting, because they have similar circumstances, but Mash was lucky with the people around him. He tells Mash to show him what he can do, revealing that Lemon is being drained of her magic power, and after 30 minutes, she will have no magic, just like him. Mash swears he will beat him, and Razor goes all out with his magic, repeatedly slashing Mash as he dashes all around him. Mash can't even defend himself, and ends up getting stabbed in the stomach. Razor says he is too weak to save anyone, but his sword gets stuck as Mash clenches his abs. This lets Mash grab onto him, and he headbutts Razor in the face, breaking his mask, and revealing his face. His eye is red, but Mash thinks it's just bloodshot, and asks if he is okay. Razor explains that his eye is known as the evil eye, and has the power to disable anyone's magic. It's seen as a power from the devil, so he is seen as an outcast and rejected by the world. Mash apologizes since the eye doesn't work on him, and Razor explains he is the natural enemy of all magicians, so they have all feared and despised him his entire life. Even his family feared him, and he thinks he should never have been born, but thinks Mash wouldn't understand since he was blessed to have a loving father. He activates his secondeth magic, creating a field around them, and an arrow appears on Mash's body. In an instant, Razor delivers another devastating attack, explaining that within the field, Mash's speed is drained and transferred to himself, so he had no chance of winning. Mash can only shield himself, and Razor tells him it's the end, but Mash smashes the ground, splitting the floor, and he destroys Razor's sword. Razor realizes that by splitting the floor, his movements were limited. He thinks about pulling back, but Mash steps on his foot, stopping him from running. Mash activates his muscle magic, delivering a devastating smash that blows Razor right out of the field. His spell is broken, and Mash chases him down, kicking him in the back. He gets thrown away, but thinks that if he loses, he will also lose his reason to live. So he tries to fight back, and the two clash, but Mash catches his sword, 
smashing him into the wall, and Mash proceeds to smash him around all over the place, finishing things off with a submission attack. As Razor lies on the ground, he wishes he was born normal. We learn his evil eye manifested when he was a child, and his parents locked him up in the basement so people wouldn't find out about him. But after some time, his parents even tried to kill him, and he came to the realization that he should never have been born. But he was given purpose by Abel, even if he was being used as a tool, it gave him a reason to live, but now that he has failed, he thinks he is back to being unwanted. Mash can see how lucky he is to have his father, and he offers to become Razor's friend. But Razor thinks it's impossible, saying it's only a matter of time before his feelings about him will change. But as thanks for his kindness, Razor warns him not to go ahead, saying Abel is on a completely different level, and he has no chance of winning. Mash thanks him for the warning, but decides to keep going. He says that no matter what others think about him, his feelings won't change, and he invites him to have cream puffs together the next time they meet. Barrett and Finn are up against Milo and Love, but we see another student has found the secret door, and he prepares to head inside. Love sees they are both only single liners, thinking they will be easy to deal with, and Milo decides to let her handle them herself, leaving to go and find Mash instead. Love immediately asks if they like her, but Barrett and Finn find this strange, saying they don't even know her, so she starts asking if they think she is cute instead. Barrett can tell she is trying to be manipulative, but he thinks she is totally his type. However, he claims Lemon is already his fiancé, so he can't be with her, and Love immediately tells him to die. Barrett is shocked she changed so quickly, and Love attacks with her tornado magic. Barrett counters with a fireball, but he can tell there is a big difference in their power. Love claims that all women are queens, saying any guy who can't tell them they are cute and serve them, don't deserve to live. Barrett thinks she is being too extreme, and Love asks them if they like her once again. Barrett tries to resist her, saying he already has Lemon, and Finn thinks it must be deja vu. Barrett gets hit by Love's tornado magic and gets blown away. Love claims her father told her she can kill anyone who doesn't cherish her, but Barrett gets back up, attacking with his fireballs. Love says his magic is too weak, but the fireballs land short, causing a smoke screen instead. Barrett lunges for her wand, but Love blows him away, knocking him down. Love reveals that Milo's power is to turn a specific target to stone. The target is the one who opened the door, so Mash will be turned to stone if they don't defeat her and stop Milo within 30 minutes. Love traps Barrett in a tornado cage, telling him it will be impossible for him to escape. Barrett struggles inside it, and Love feels bad for Mash, because his friends are so weak, and she calls him a fool for trying to go up against Abel. Barrett feels like he is about to die, thinking there is nothing he can do, but he has a flashback to when he was a child, where some other kids are picking on him, trading him with their old broom. But there is suddenly an explosion, as his sister stands up for him. She tells him he should fight back, but he thinks that would only make things worse. She thinks he gives up too easily, saying it will be a problem when he gets a real friend, someone who will stand up for him no matter what, so he must fight to hold onto people like that. He thinks about how Mash stood up for him, and he refuses to let Love mock his friend. As Love goes to finish Finn off, Barrett breaks free from her tornado cage. Love is shocked he broke her spell. She attacks with her tornado, but Barrett easily cancels it out. She wonders how his power has suddenly increased, and she notices the mark on his head, recognizing it as the warding cross, which some children are born with, and are considered battle demons who can unleash their magic power when their emotions cross a certain point. Barrett says it's a crime to insult his friends, as he creates countless fireballs around the arena. Love panics, and Barrett claims he is the main character, as he attacks with his fireballs. There is a huge explosion, but when the smoke clears, it seems he intentionally missed, and he says he doesn't like hurting girls, so he tells her to just leave. Love thanks him for his mercy, and Finn is amazed he defeated her all by himself. He compliments Barrett, but a stone head suddenly appears behind him, and Barrett pushes him out of the way, blocking the attack. Milo returns, wondering what's going on, and Love apologizes for losing. Barrett is glad Milo gave up on trying to turn Mash to stone, but Milo prepares to crush them, summoning a number of stone hands to attack. Barrett thinks he is about to collapse, and Love calls Milo a prodigy, because he is the only first year in the Magia Lupus, so she thinks they have no chance. 
The hands are about to reach them, but Milo is suddenly stabbed by a sword and blown away. Finn recognizes the sword, and Milo wonders what happened. He becomes shocked, realizing he's up against the previous year's divine visionary, Rain. We learn he is the ace of the Alder Dorm, and he is also Finn's older brother. Milo tries to regain his composure, thinking he is just a student. He attacks with his stone head, but Rain easily splits it in half. Rain summons countless swords, showing his overwhelming power, and he attacks Milo with all his swords. Barrett is amazed by the power of a divine visionary, and Love immediately decides to defect from the Lang Dorm. As the dust clears, Milo realizes he stands no chance, so he starts begging for his life, saying he was forced into being bad and he regrets his actions. But Rain kicks him, saying that actions speak louder than words, and he doesn't believe him, as he keeps on stomping on him to teach him a lesson. Barrett is shocked by how brutal he is, wondering if they are really on the same side. Rain tells them to get out, saying he will handle the rest, and Love quickly runs away. After his interrogation, Rain heads deeper into the dungeon, and we learn that he was sent by Headmaster Wahlberg, because they had a lead on Innocent Zero, and his pawn should be in the area. He thinks they could be hiding their magic power, but he suddenly runs into Mash who is eating a cream puff, and Rain finds he has a strange aura. He thinks Mash could be one of the pawns, so he summons a spider which can measure his magic power, to see if he is really a student. Rain attacks with his sword, but Mash easily catches it, wondering what's going on. The spider detects he has zero magic, and it thinks it must be a bug, so Rain attacks again, this time with 3% of his power. The attack lands on Mash, but he ends up turning the swords into a chair. The spider still detects zero magic, but Rain decides to test him one more time. He attacks with 10% of his power, and the spider thinks Mash stands no chance, but Mash practices his swing, and he takes the bunting stance. He is able to bunt all of the swords, and they all fall to the ground. Rain asks for his name, and when Mash tells him, Rain remembers Wahlberg telling him about a new student who is quite unique. Rain apologizes for attacking him, but Mash doesn't accept it. Rain feels bad, so he gives Mash a magic handkerchief that has the power to heal his wounds, and Mash thinks he must like rabbits, but he thanks Rain for the item. Rain goes on to warn him about Abel, and Mash wonders how he knows. Rain reveals that Wahlberg told him about his goal to become the next Divine Visionary, so it's natural for him to be up against Abel, who currently holds the most coins. Rain supports his goal to become a Divine Visionary, wanting more allies that are strong. He warns Mash about Abel's doll magic, saying he might struggle against him because he has no magic, but Mash insists that he does. Rain wishes him luck, saying he has other things to do, and Mash thanks him for his help, but Rain claims he did everything for his own sake. We see Wahlberg telling him about how Mash puts his friends above himself, and how he even saved his brother, so Rain is rooting for him to achieve his goal. Mash finds the final room, wondering if the door is a push or a pull. He guesses correctly, but he thinks about Lemon, and ends up blowing the door open. Abel wonders if he has something against doors, and Mash says he was just trying to knock. Abel is surprised he was able to defeat Razor, thinking Rain should be the only student that could stand up against Razor's evil eye, so Abel thinks he could be on the same level as a divine visionary, but Mash just worries Abel has worked out his secret. However, he becomes relieved when Abel just thinks he is strong, as he refers to him as a fellow superior being, reminding Mash of his plan to get rid of those who are inferior. He thinks the weak have been taking advantage of their kindness, gaining more rights, and making them weaker overall, so he wants to get rid of them all. Mash wonders if he means those who can't use magic, and Abel says they need to be disposed of, because just segregating them from society is not enough. Abel also includes underachievers, and people who shelter the weak on his list, but Mash thinks back to how Burndead took him in. He does a double backflip even as a kid, and Burndead gives him a taste of his first cream puff. He thinks about Burndead telling him how proud he is to have him as his son, and Mash realizes he can't be friends with Abel. Abel says he just doesn't understand, calling him dense, so he decides Mash's inferior genes need to be eliminated, as he sends his puppets to attack. We see love as she goes to find Abel. She is relieved she managed to get away from Rain, but she finds the door to Abel's room broken, and she is shocked seeing Mash fighting against Abel. Mash crushes one of the puppets, 
but acid suddenly spills out from it, and Abel tells him he should be more careful. However, Mash grabs onto the head of the puppet he destroyed. Love wonders what Mash can do against the acid puppets, but Mash throws the head, and ends up bowling over all the acid puppets in a single strike. Love can't believe what she just witnessed, and Mash wonders if Abel would consider himself inferior if he loses. He also wonders what Abel has done with Lemon, but Abel claims he doesn't know who he is talking about, as he summons his stronger puppets. He thinks Mash doesn't stand a chance, but the puppets get sent flying, and Abel realizes Mash has gotten even stronger since their last meeting. Mash demands that if he wins, Abel must let Lemon go. Abel is impressed Mash isn't just all talk, but he uses the strongest puppet, Mash himself, as Mash starts to beat himself up. He can't control himself, and we see strings attached to his body. He starts choking himself out, but the string suddenly breaks, as Abel apologizes for using such a crude technique, saying it was too one-sided. Instead, he brings out Finn, who he managed to capture and turn into a puppet. He notes he also captured Barrett, but he was too injured to be useful, so Finn will serve as the entertainment. He sends Finn to attack, but Mash blocks the attack. However, Abel warns him he is not allowed to block, or else he will tear Finn to pieces. Mash starts getting beaten up, and Abel suggests he has the choice to take Finn out himself, saying that people always want to believe they are good, but that's not their true nature. Mash continues taking the hits, and Finn's axe ends up breaking, but Mash is still unfazed. He takes out his gold coin, and Abel wonders if he is finally ready to hand it over. Mash flicks it at him, but it actually cuts the strings controlling Finn, and Finn starts to transform back into a human. The coin returns to Mash, and he claims that the coin must just like him better. Abel uses his technique to control Mash once again, deciding that he is done messing around. Mash tries to resist, but Abel calls it useless, saying it's impossible for a human to resist his power. Mash says he will make him regret messing with his friends, as he is able to take a step, breaking one of Abel's fingers. Mash gets into position, as Abel struggles to hold him back, as Mash breaks free, and smashes him in the face. However, Abel activates his skill, and Mash starts to turn into a puppet. Abel is impressed Mash managed to make him use this spell, but Mash is completely transformed into a puppet, and he says it's all over. Abel goes to take Mash's coin, but it turns out to just be a cream puff, and Abel is confused. He suddenly gets punched, and Mash returns to being a human, glad that his cream puff is okay. Abel wonders how Mash was able to move as a puppet, because his puppet magic blocks the electric signals from the brain, so he shouldn't be able to move. But he realizes it must have been a spinal reflex. Just like pulling back after touching something hot, or moving your foot when your knee gets tapped, there are some actions that bypass the brain to respond quickly to external threats. So taking Mash's cream puff was the trigger for the reflex, and Love thinks it's ridiculous the cream puff was so important to him. Abel acknowledges Mash, so he decides to use the power he gained from extracting the magic from the other students. He activates his second of magic, summoning a giant puppet, and he reveals it has the ability to turn anyone within a hundred meter radius into a puppet. He explains the puppet will create invisible strings that will transform his body on contact, and Love worries she is also in range of the attack. Abel says it's impossible to counter his attack, and once he has become a puppet, he will be toyed with until he can never recover. The strings descend, covering the entire area, and Abel says Mash should be happy he made him use his ultimate skill, but his doll is somehow destroyed, and Mash is revealed to be fine. Abel wonders how he is still human, and Mash says he just tore the strings. Abel thinks it should be impossible, since the strings are invisible when they descend so a normal person should not be able to stop them. Love is shocked by what actually happened, and we see Mash shifted his body in a particular way so that the strings touched him at different times, so the moment he felt the string on his left side, he instantly tore them when he still had control of his right hand. Love can't believe his insane strategy, and Abel wonders if Mash is even human. He tries attacking with his puppet, but Mash completely shatters it, and he appears behind Abel. Mash grabs onto him, jumping up into the air, and he smashes Abel into the ground. In a flashback, we learn about Abel's mother. She was a kind and compassionate person, and although she was a noble, she treated the commoners just as equally, saying that it was only by chance that they were born privileged. But one day she was stabbed. 
She was distributing food to the poor as she would always do, but one of them got greedy, wanting all the food for himself, and he ended up stabbing her when she resisted. Despite believing in the goodness of humanity, she was taken away, so Abel started to believe that the weak needed to be purged. He gathered the most talented people to join him, people who also weren't satisfied with the way things are in the world. He refuses to change his mind, saying it's natural for the strong to take from the weak, but Mash says he is wrong because there will always be bad people, no matter what their social standing is. Since he won their fight, Mash asks for Lemon's location, and Abel agrees to let all the students go. Mash thinks that since he was doing everything for the sake of his mother, he isn't such a bad guy. Abel releases his spell, revealing Lemon, and Mash catches her. Finn regains consciousness, and the three are glad to be reunited. They all celebrate, and Finn and Lemon call Mash a hero. Finn is in tears thanking Mash, and Lemon apologizes for getting him involved, and she thanks him for saving her. Barrett comes crawling over as well, saying he also helped, and they continue to celebrate together. Abel can't believe he lost to such buffoons, and Finn wonders what happened to Lance. We see Lance in the dungeon, and he runs into Rain. Lance suddenly blocks his attack, and Rain is surprised he could counter his magic. His spider companion reveals his power is through the roof, and we learn that it's not actually Lance, but one of Innocent Zero's associates. The man wonders how Rain saw through his disguise, but Rain is just attacking first and asking questions later, saying that it's faster that way. Rain wonders what Innocent Zero wants from the school. The man reveals they are searching for something. Abel was meant to help them look, but he turned out to be no help, so he is off to kill Abel since they no longer need him. Rain tries to go after him, but he gets stopped by a giant knife. The man goes on ahead, and we see Rain is confronted by another opponent, but he worries for Mash and his friends, because the man heading towards them has the power on the level of a divine visionary. We see Burndead and Brad wondering how Mash is going at the academy, hoping he hasn't been exposed for having no magic. Burndead wonders why Brad doesn't need to work, but he says he is there to get some screen time. Mash and his friends continue to celebrate, and Abel wonders how long they are going to keep fooling around for. Mash excuses himself, saying he needs to go to the bathroom, and his friends are just glad everything is over. We see the other students who were puppets, have all been turned back to normal, but the criminal suddenly arrives. They wonder who he is, but the man just blows them away. Barrett thinks about fighting him, but he instantly can sense how strong he is. The man approaches Abel, and we learn that his name is Cell. He sees that Abel lost against someone, and he calls Abel pathetic for not being able to reach the top at the school. Cell thanks him for his intel about the headmaster, but he suddenly controls Abel's hands, and Abel starts choking himself. Cell says he couldn't find the one they were looking for, so he is no longer needed. Abel is about to die, but Mash suddenly returns with a plate of cream puffs, ready to continue their celebration. His friends tell him it's not the time for that, and a fly suddenly lands on his nose. It tickles his nose, causing Mash to sneeze, and he throws the cream puffs at Cell. His friends wonder if it was just a coincidence, and Abel manages to get free. Mash asks for his cream puffs back, and his friends can't believe that's all he is thinking about. Cell throws the cream puffs to the ground, which shocks Mash, and Cell suddenly feels his head ache, as he wonders if Mash is the one he has been looking for. Cell decides to finish what he started, as he lifts Abel up into the air. He prepares to finish him off, and Mash tries to save him, but Razor suddenly appears to protect Abel. Mash rushes over, and Razor apologizes, saying he won't be able to have a cream puff with him. Mash gives him back his magic handkerchief, and Cell is surprised his attack wasn't fatal. He realizes that just before he cast his spell, Mash threw a rock at him which altered his spell's trajectory. Mash stands up to him, and he smashes the ground, kicking one of the rocks at Cell. Everyone is surprised, because Cell is able to catch the rock, and he starts to lick it, but Mash just finds him weird for licking a rock. Cell tells him Razor only has 30 minutes before he is beyond help so he wonders what Mash will be able to do. He starts attacking with his magic, which Mash smashes with his fists. Cell wonders if he is all talk, combining his magic into a stronger attack, and Mash gets hit. Abel thinks Mash can't win, because there is too much of a difference between them. He thinks back to how his mother would tell him that it was only by chance that they were privileged, and he thinks Cell is just superior to them, 
so he thinks they have no chance. Cell continues to launch his attacks, but Mash keeps on blocking the attacks. Abel thinks Razor was a fool for saving him, but Mash says Razor was happy. He says Razor was always alone, but Abel was able to give him a reason to keep living, and he was happy to be needed. Mash says he would feel the same way, imagining himself in Razor's situation. Abel remembers that his mother would also tell him to put himself in another's position, so that he can become kinder to others. Mash keeps on fighting, and we see how Razor was feared his entire life. He was always alone, wishing that he was never born, but when he met Abel who accepted him, he was finally able to find a reason to live. He tells Abel to get away while he still can, and Abel thinks he is noble, just like his mother. Mash is stuck defending, and Cell wonders if that is all he can do. Abel can see Mash has no chance to close in on Cell, and Cell starts to get bored. So he attacks with even bigger projectiles. Things are looking bad for Mash, but Abel's doll suddenly protects him. Abel sends his doll to attack, but Cell easily crushes it with his magic. He tells Abel he doesn't stand a chance, but one of the heads suddenly move, revealing Mash was hiding inside, and Mash smashes Cell in the face. Cell is protected by an armor, but he is surprised Mash was able to damage it. He wonders what kind of magic Mash is using, but he says it doesn't matter, as he takes out a mirror. Barrett recognizes it as the Spellflection Mirror, a magic item that can reflect any kind of magic, so it's the most feared item among magic users. Barrett warns Mash, and Cell tells him to do his worst, saying he will be crushed by his own magic, but Mash smashes right through it. His friends become shocked, realizing Mash's power isn't magical, and they remember his past feats, and they think he is something out of a fairy tale. Cell is unfazed by Mash's attack, but he suddenly notices a mark forming on his hand, so he confirms Mash is really the one they are looking for. The room suddenly shatters, and two giant hands appear. Cell claims he has an urgent errand to run, but tells Mash he will see him again real soon. Cell disappears, and Mash is glad it's over. Abel heads to the infirmary with Razor, and Razor hopes to have cream puffs with Mash the next time they meet. Abel offers Mash his thanks, saying he will return the favor one day. Mash's friends join him, and they are still shocked he has no magic. They worry he will get into trouble if people found out, and Mash starts to get scared, claiming he can totally use magic. His friends decide they will help protect his secret, but one of the other students wakes up, saying he heard everything. He thinks it's ridiculous someone with no magic is at the school, so he plans to tell everyone about Mash. Mash realizes his time has finally come, and his friends wonder what he is going to do. But Mash decides it's the perfect time to have a cream puff. But that's how this series ends for now, look forward to a new season in 2024. I hope you enjoyed the video, remember to like, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.